Eagle 15 to all ground teams. Report status. Chaos Roger, Eagle 15. Move copies, Eagle 15. BP team to Eagle 15. Echo Strike Forces moving in. Eagle 15 to Musket Lead. Report vehicle status. Move to Eagle 15. We got a visual on a friendly convoy heading north on MRS Ohio. Eagle 15 to Musket Lead. We have received a report of suspicious activity north of the city. Recap to report visual. Eagle 15 to Musket Lead. Maintain a visual on the convoy. Eagle 15 to Loaf. Provide additional ISR from Musket Lead's position. Retasking Musket Lead to new location. Eagle 15 to Musket Lead. Be advised of armed personnel at Giants. Eagle 15 to Loaf. Confirm static convoy. Relay coordinates now. Musket Lead. Convoy location. Eagle 15 to Loaf. Retap guys to convoy location for continued support. Eagle 15 to Musket Lead. Provide visual support for Strike Force. just happened? The remotely piloted aircraft pilot's performance depends on many different types of information, including environmental conditions, flight data, mission mapping, and enemy activity, as well as the socio-cultural context surrounding the mission. This information arises from a variety of sources and is often buried within other non-critical information. The vast amounts of information presented to the pilots could be described as pieces of a large jigsaw puzzle with some pieces missing and other pieces that just don't fit. The success of the mission hinges on the pilot's ability to put the right pieces of the puzzle together at the right time. The current mission began with one pilot flying two remotely piloted aircraft known as RPAs. These RPAs were being flown over secluded areas of suspected enemy activity to observe and gather intelligence. The pilot's job was to monitor these missions and fly the aircraft. As the mission evolved, a third RPA was added to the pilot's responsibility. This RPA was tasked to fly alongside an active convoy to protect friendly troops from possible harm. The pilot continued to fly and monitor the first two RPAs, while concurrently flying and monitoring the area near the convoy with the third RPA. Soon, the pilot was given an additional RPA to fly, now the fourth in his mission. Combined intelligence from ground, air, and mission control identified a possible target in another location. The fourth, fully armed RPA had to be ready to take out the target once confirmation of the target was obtained. As witnessed, the mission quickly evolved from routine to hot or combat status. The ability to make rapid and accurate decisions depended on putting together multiple pieces of critical information. The pilot had to watch for enemy activity under the first and second RPAs for any unexpected movement. He also had to watch for and be prepared to attack any enemy threats to the convoy with the third RPA. With the fourth aircraft, he had to wait for target confirmation and be ready to execute a lethal attack. The pilot attempted to filter out the non-critical elements from the onslaught of information. High mental workload and a loss of situation awareness about what was happening were induced as the pilot struggled to extract the information critical to the performance of the mission. Ultimately, the pilot entered the state of information overload and started falling behind. The mission performance began to suffer. The pilot recognized this decline as he began to perceive a threat to the mission's overall success. Fear, confusion, frustration, and impaired judgment increased, bringing the pilot closer to mission failure. Now faced with a threat, his brain prepared his body for fight or flight and instructed the adrenal glands to secrete hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol into the bloodstream. These chemicals caused the heart rate and blood pressure to dramatically increase. The airways and the lungs were open and respiration increased, allowing red blood cells to absorb large amounts of oxygen, which they delivered throughout the body. 
Blood vessels near the skin and intestines became constricted, forcing blood flow to the major muscles and the brain. The brain, when operating at its peak, requires about 20% of the entire body's oxygen supply. The brain and muscles, now equipped with an increased supply of oxygen, were operating as efficiently as possible. The pilot was alert and making decisions to the best of his ability. Soon after, the suspected target was confirmed and the pilot was given the order to take out the target with the fourth RPA. At the same time, ground and air intelligence confirmed an additional imminent threat to the convoy. The pilot was ordered to also take out this threat to the convoy with the third RPA. These two critical tasks were added to the overall mission and both required the full attention of the pilot. The mission complexity became overwhelming. Stress and workload surpassed the levels that his body and mind could manage. Thus, the pilot was forced to make a decision between tasks or all would fail. He chose to ignore the emergent target and instead to focus on protecting the troops in the convoy by taking out the threat. The fourth mission status dropped to the point of failure, but the convoy was safe. How could this have been done differently to achieve all four mission objectives? The Human Universal Measurement and Assessment Network Laboratory, or Human Lab, was developed to use a comprehensive measurement and assessment approach to provide performance optimization and mitigation recommendations that are based on a thorough understanding of the complexities that exist in contextually rich activities. The Human Laboratory is equipped with a state-of-the-art multimodal data acquisition system. The lab technician is applying electrodes, which will monitor brain, heart, muscle activity, eye movement, respiration, galvanic skin response, and other body signals. This data is collected and analyzed along with other data to compile a comprehensive picture of drivers that may affect the pilot's workload, decision-making ability, and ultimately, performance. Smart iPro cameras and software will accurately track and measure eye movement to provide information about operator state. Since the retina sends about 10 1 million point images to the brain every second, the eye tracking cameras can provide a plethora of data. Voice stress analysis is being performed in real time to detect changes in the pilot's voice, which can be indicative of elevated levels of workload or stress. These increasing levels of cognitive stress may suggest higher cognitive workload and potential risks to performance. Thermal imaging is another method to employ to monitor stress by evaluating changes in skin temperature. Thermography and digital infrared imaging studies have shown that some facial temperatures, especially around the nasal area, decrease during stress. This is due in part to blood being rerouted to parts of the body, including the brain, that require performance enhancements in order to deal with elevated workload and stress levels. Saliva may also be extracted before and after the simulation to analyze the biological and chemical changes in the bloodstream, including the presence of the stress hormone cortisol. Numerous elements of physiology are measured and assessed to generate a comprehensive picture of the pilot's physiological state. This information is used to identify potential bottlenecks in the human machine system so that meaningful mitigation strategies can be implemented. The integrated sensing technology, assessment of cognitive functional state, and the employment of meaningful augmentation techniques can increase battlefield situation awareness and decrease individual or team workload. This will, in turn, assure a higher probability of mission success. The timely indication of higher workload and stress by real-time physiological measures may also help mitigate potential pilot error by providing information to allow decision makers to shift some of the workload to a coworker or implement adaptive automation techniques. For example, if the commander of this operation was apprised of the potential information overload condition, he or she may have elected to defer adding the fourth RPA. If that was not possible, the pilot may have employed whatever automation or decision-aiding technologies were available in the system to help sift through the information and focus on task-relevant critical information. The use of context-dependent interface cues may have also facilitated more efficient and effective decision-making from the pilot. 
there are a large number of mitigation strategies that could be employed when mission success begins to degrade. Which ones to employ when is key to assuring mission success. The efforts of the human lab will ultimately enable the warfighters to optimize performance and successfully accomplish their missions by alleviating cognitive overload. With the use of the human lab, this scenario was repeated. In the second version of the scenario, the pilot, informed about his physiological and cognitive state, passed the fourth RPA and target to another RPA pilot teammate and successfully dispatched the threat to the convoy while she destroyed her assigned target. Mission accomplished.